So this is the uh, introduction to equipment of what we call dozers. And dozers are relatively simple pieces of equipment. They um, are vehicles that can push or pull with a great deal of tractive power. And they're characterized by several attachments, a blade, varying configurations, a ripper of varying configurations, and a <clears throat> suspension that allows them to transfer flywheel horsepower into the wheels to move things along. The photograph you can see on your screen is a rubber tired dozer. This rubber tired dozer has, a, uh, has the ability to move <clears throat> readily and easily under uh, uh, on good soil conditions. But more frequently, when we have a dozer, we're going to see that, uh, we're gonna see that dozer um, that has tracks. And so this is, the, uh, this is the, the two types. You can see the photographs here. Self-propelled machine, pull a load or an attachment, or push with a front-mounted blade. And they really are the workhorses of the construction industry. Bulldozers can push and pull better than any other type of vehicle because that's all they're designed to do. They don't carry any load. They don't lift any load. They simply push. High tractive effort. A crawler or a vehicle on tracks is going to move slowly. It uh, doesn't drive on the road very well because the tracks will tear the road out. So it has to be floated around. But it has a very low ground bearing pressure, which means it will float over top of soil. So even though the vehicle is quite heavy, the contact area of the tracks is large, and so the ground pressure is small. A wheel dozer can go much faster, sometimes you know, 25, 30 miles an hour, but they have a high ground bearing pressure and they have rolling resistance of the tires. The tracks do not have rolling resistance. And so we use them in different ways because sometimes we need a lot of power and, and on soft soil, bulldozers with tracks do that. Sometimes we need a lot of pushing on firm ground conditions. We can go faster if we have a wheeled vehicle. So you'll see both types. You'll also see as we go along the, the arrangement of the undercarriage, the, uh, the triangular part with the drive sprocket, which is being driven by the gears and, and pulling the tracks, mounted up above the road wheels, it's called a delta drive. It improves the efficiency of the vehicle significantly. What do we use dozers for? Dozers are very good at hauling short distances up to about 300 feet. Typical in operation, you can backfill trenches, clear and grub, create stockpiles, excavate. You can push load scrapers, which we'll talk about when we talk about scrapers. We'll see a little bit of that in this presentation. You can rip up compacted soil you can rip up some weak bedrock, or you can shape slopes, or you can take stockpiles, say, that are dumped by a dump truck and spread them out <clears throat> with a dozer. And of course, towing equipment and attachments. And we've already done a little bit of that calculation, right, in uh, one of our assignments. The detachments for doing work come in two shapes. The first is a blade. The blade may be straight, which is what it sounds like. The blade is straight. It has no, <coughs> has no turns in it. It's a flat, uh, relative to the front of it is a flat straight line. An angle blade is one where the sides angle in. It improves the capacity for carrying. It reduces the capacity for cutting. A universal blade is one that doesn't bend in quite as much, but isn't quite as straight as a straight blade and it can do, uh, do both jobs okay. And then we have a cushion blade. Cushion blade is used on a very, for a very important purpose and that is to load our, um, load our scrapers uh, and help them to push load. In other words, that they, they have enough power to carry soil but they don't have enough power to cut in. We'll, we'll talk a lot about that in our next lecture. Attached to the rear of these vehicles, you can place a ripper. A ripper are those long uh, forks, tines that can be pushed in hydraulically into the soil, and then the 
tractor will pull them through the soil and you can rip up compacted soil and you can rip up rock, make it uh, soft and easier for other vehicles to lift or maybe a second dozer to cut. Here's our uh, examples. You can see a, um, a straight blade is just straight, an angled blade, angles more up at the top, a little bit angled at the sides, universal blade, which is designed to both cut and carry, and a cushion blade, which again is used for pushing. What does a cushion blade look like? This is a cushion blade. You can see it, uh, it, has, um, it has a central cushion part. It also has some shock absorbing uh, attachments in the rear. The, uh, the lower uh, plates that are bolted on are the wear parts. They're the knife edges that do, the, that do cutting. And so they are, can be bolted on and bolted off as they wear without replacing the entire blade. And uh, this is a photograph of a push cat. It's what we call a, uh, a uh, dozer that's helping to load a, uh, a scraper. And you can see it has moved up to behind the scraper and it is pushing the scraper into the soil. So the scraper has a, a faster ability to engage and pick up that soil. See, so it's pushing right there. And it's got this uh, thickened piece of plate to deal with that. Tractors that are equipped with blades, standard equipment for excavating. You can uh, use this equipment to, uh, to dig holes, to do all sorts of things. If you attach it with special blades, and this particular vehicle is a, uh, is a military vehicle, and it has a special blade used for land clearing. You can see it's a lot, um, a lot shallower angle of attack at the angle of the teeth, and there is a breaker bar to help start pushing down any wood uh, or any timber that uh, trees and things that you would run into. Dozers, as we said, equate, equipped with <coughs> cushion bars or cushion blades are assisting scrapers to load. And we have our ripper, right? So we've gone through all of this. This is how it works. We can also adjust the blade. We can adjust the blade as a, as, uh, with respect to pitch, which is how, uh, how much we are going to dig in on our forward motion. And obviously we pitch it forward so that the blade is cutting. And um, after we've cut, then we pitch it to the rear and it will carry. Similarly, we can angle the blade. We can move it one side or the other and so that we can drift material so that the material we will pick up will end up being put in a row or a wind row along the side of the vehicle, directed off to whichever way the, the blade is pointing it. And then we have a tilt function. And in this tilt function, the blades can go um, rotate about the central axis. What, uh, what does this look like? We can uh, hear from the professionals. And we'll also get to see some dozers in action.
Um, when they were talking about PAT, of course, they mean a pitch angle tilt blade, just like we were talking about. There's a lot of changes that are going on. Um, most bulldozers uh, are now can have the blade controlled by the GPS. They, um, they can download the uh, 3D uh, plans for the project. Uh, and in fact, they can download last night's update during the night, and they will, um, they will know where they are and where they're supposed to cut to. Um, it has become a lot, uh, a lot more efficient because if we, uh, for previous to the to this, we had to have a surveyor who was working with the dozer to know whether we had cut not deeply enough, or too deeply, or the random chance we were just right. So we uh, we need to be aware that uh, the real changes in these vehicles are also in their control systems, and there are also uh, vehicles that are autonomous um, in many cases. The mechanical systems of 40 years ago have been changed. When I was your age, there were, um, you would change the gears uh, with a crash gearbox. You needed to know how to do that, which is where you don't necessarily use a clutch and you can listen to the engine revs and the transmission sound and you can change gears without a clutch because you're able to, uh, to sync them. Um, now they, they're all uh, fly, so called fly by wire, right? You can drive them with a joystick and really changed quite a bit. Some of the anatomy is different. If we have the C-frame inside the tracks or outside the tracks, if they're outside the tracks, as in the photograph, they're stronger, but they're wider and bulkier. Inside the tracks, smaller footprint, more, manu more maneuverable, but they're not going to be as strong. On the, um, on the Canvas site, there's another uh, lecture that walks through estimating production. And so um, we're going to uh, very quickly go at 10,000 feet over this one, but the method is found in the other presentation. We need to look at the potential pushing as measured by our cutting ratio, which is the horsepower per foot cutting edge, the length of the blade that is cutting, um, multiple, uh, and use that as the, uh, as the denominator. Load ratio is horsepower per loose cubic yard. Straight blades, they're optimized for penetrating into the ground. Universal and semi-universal blades are optimized for load. So some of them, uh, the straight blade, if you're cutting is, is in control, universal blades or semi-U blades if carrying is in control. The productivity depends on the size and the configuration of the blade, the power of the tractor, how far you're moving the materials, what you're moving, what the working conditions are like, including rolling resistance and grade resistance. And remember for track vehicles, there is no rolling resistance. There's no pneumatic pressure in steel track. Of course, the traction on the surface you're working on and then the altitude that we have to derate the, uh, the vehicles for, uh, for operating at, um, at different altitudes. And we won't really cover that, but you should be aware 
how to do that. This portion uh, of uh, how we're going to go through here, this has been looked at uh, in, the, uh, in the other uh, presentation. And so you need to take a look at that. And I think we will end up with a, um, end up with uh, a couple of points to make. One of which is, in the other presentation, we talk about the method of dozing. There are three methods. The one is the dozer can work by itself, the way you were seeing in the uh, in the video. The second is slot dozing, where you're dozing down a slot, and you are having you have soil on either side of the blade run. When you do that, the blade will pick up more soil because it uses the edges of the soil that's being left behind to carry additional soil increasing your efficiency. You can also uh, doze side by side. And that's in that uh, side by side picture. You can see that at the outside edge of each of those vehicles, um, there is, uh, they're only able to carry so much soil before it spills off the blade. But in the middle, they're carrying more soil because they're side by side. So, you know, what does this look like? This is an image of a vehicle that is slot dozing. And you can see that the soil pile at the edge of the blade is uh, is carrying more than it would if those uh, windrows on either side were not present. And this is a giant image, uh, in some cases, of side dozing. Uh, the ones that are side dozing are in the middle. These are all guys are, in some cases, also using slots. A large movement of the material and very interesting as each of those, uh, they look like D11s, each of those vehicles is, uh, is worth uh, close to a million dollars. Look at your um, look at your handouts and everything else, and uh, we will be uh, we will be going on and talking about uh, other pieces of equipment next. Have a good Thanksgiving.